the first day of school. I wake up at 6.45, get dressed, eat breakfast, brush my teeth, and head out with all my school supplies. A backpack, a Chromebook, a pencil, some paper, some binders, and a label. I can see that some of you have been out of middle school for quite a while, but whether it's been one year or 50, you all probably still have some memory of being labeled. Well, today I'm going to revive those memories to remind you all how it feels and why we need to end it. Some of the people in the front are looking at me like I'm crazy, so I should probably explain what I mean by labeling. There are many different kinds of labeling. There's the kind you put on groceries so that you know what you're buying. There's the kind you put on presents so you know who the gift is to and from. But there's another kind, a kind that happens in schools and in life. This kind of labeling pushes people into a tiny box based on one small detail of who they are or who others think they are. Labels are flat and one-dimensional, while people are more like those crazy 20-sided dice with many different sides to offer the world. When we were in third grade, we were all friends. We could hang out with whoever we wanted. We could be whoever we wanted. But somewhere in the summer between third and fourth grade, everything changed. Girls who I'd hung out with a week before school started now acted like I had never existed. The girls I'd made fairy houses with and had told ghost stories to were gone, replaced by groups that wouldn't accept me. I had suddenly been labeled goody-goody thanks to my rule-following attitude. I'd pretend to be okay with this, but then I would go home and cry, mourning my lost friends. Don't get me wrong, I did have a group, and I did have a lot of friends that I liked, but I still really missed my old ones. I didn't enjoy the whole of fourth grade because I was so busy crying over this life I had lost. And the goody-goody label stuck. I started to wonder if other kids maybe felt the same way I did, so I hatched a plan to find out. I did some research and created a survey and had middle school students answer questions about whether they've been labeled and what their label was. Here are some of the ones I've heard from people. Nerd, drama queen, goody-goody, dumb blonde, weak, Ginger, dumb jock, crybaby, science dork, weird, loser, freak. When you came in, you were given an envelope with a name tag on it that has one of these labels on it. I want you to put that name tag on right now. students and many other people, old and young, define themselves and each other. How does that feel, being in a random label that limits your beautifully complex, multifaceted self to one word? Do you feel misunderstood? Do you feel limited? Do you feel angry? Do you feel embarrassed? Do you feel sad? Now you know how we feel every day at school. Luckily for you all, when my talk ends and you guys have your break, these labels will come off. Hopefully not onto the floor, but they will find their ways to trash cans and folded up into pockets and stuck to the bottoms of people's shoes. They will be left behind. We middle school students aren't so lucky. When school ends, we get to go home, be with our family, relax, take our labels off, and enjoy being with ourselves, being ourselves. But then we have to go back again the next day. When we're living down to our labels, we're not living up to our fullest potential. We're afraid to follow our passions because our label tells us we can't do those activities. We're afraid to make the choices we want to make because our label tells us that's not what we should do. We're afraid to make friends with people of different labels because that's not allowed. Any breaking out of this box we've been assigned is not allowed. And so we never get to see what we're truly capable of. So when did this happen? When did our society start to rely so much on labels? As with most problems, we have to go back in time to find the answer. We have to go back a few thousand years to when we were all part of tribes, and people didn't really know who was part of their tribe and who was an enemy or something like that. To do that, we invented labeling to quickly and easily tell groups of people apart. And the rest is history, literally. But we're not cave people anymore. We have math and science and cell phones. And most importantly, we don't need labels that dictate who our friends are. We know that people have many different sides to them, and that people who are different in some ways can still be friends and have other things in common. We know labels don't paint a complete picture. So if we know it's not necessary or accurate, 
why do we do it? The answer is pretty simple, because it's easy. It takes much less time and effort to use one adjective to describe someone than many. But taking this lazy way out just becomes a habit. And if you base your friends and interests on labels, you won't have very many friends or interests. Because of my own experience of being labeled, I now do my best to A, not label, and B, not judge someone based on what label they already have. If you think of everyone as either, a, as either part of your tribe or not, you won't have very many friends. But if you think of everyone as a potential friend, chances are they will be. Unless we stop living by labels the way our caveman ancestors did, we will be no better than those cavemen. We will never evolve to match the progress of our technology and the ideals of our society. We will all just keep being cavemen, frightened, threatened, and miserable. None of us will be able to live up to our fullest human potential and make the friendships, inventions, and discoveries that we are capable of. Whenever I have to solve a problem, I always think of my big do and my little do. The big do is solving the problem altogether. The little do is that first step. In this case, the big do starts with all of you. It takes 21 days to break a habit. If everybody at the Ross School agreed for 21 days to stop using labels, we would break our lazy habit and be label free. Imagine that, a school where there are no labels. People will be able to get to know each other for who they really are and make all kinds of different friends. We could be ourselves without living, having to live down to our labels. We could thrive. Schools have taken on bullying, unhealthy lunches, kids don't like to read, and many other seemingly unsolvable problems. We could be the first school to solve the problem of labeling. Let's start a revolution and show this school and the world that we can change. Okay, remember how I said I had a big do and a little do? Well, here's a little do. I'm going to give you all some homework. I know, I know, I'm sorry, but I promise it will be fun. The little do is, in the upcoming break, try to find time between the free coffee and candy to ask someone that you don't know what label they are given by us, or in real life, if you dare, and how they are not that label. Once you see how inadequate labels are, you want to leave them to the cavemen. Kid President once said, life is a game, and we're all on the same team. Don't you think it's time we started acting like it? Thank you. <laughs>